Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus the Christ. This is the day that the Lord hath made and he has commanded us to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you so much for tuning in with us in our Wednesday night recharge on this summer hot day here in Atlanta. It is hot and I need you to stay hydrated and stay cool in the name of Jesus. So we thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. We welcome you into the sacred place that we presently call sanctuary, where God is exalted, the devil is defeated, and we have the victory. Victory is our lifestyle. After all that we have been through, God is good. Amen. I need you to type that in the comments for me, please. All capital letters, God is good. Amen. After all that you have been through, God is good. God bless you, Brother Stan. We thank you so much. We thank you for your prayers, your continued support. We thank you for your words of encouragement. We thank you for your participation in what it is that we are doing in this part of the vineyard. This is the day 
that God has made. And we will choose, we choose to rejoice and be glad. And we over here, we believe in the power of prayer. That prayer changes absolutely everything. Do you still believe in the power of prayer? Amen. We want to connect with you. My faith connects to your faith and whatever it is that you need from the Lord. I believe that God will do it. He'll do exceeding. He will do abundantly. He will do above all that we can ask or even think according to the power, the power that worketh in us. So if you're standing in the need of prayer, if you know anybody who is, I want you to type their names in the comments, please. If you would put my name and my family's name in the comments, we need your prayers. Amen. Prayer is the key. Amen. We thank God for us being able to go to God in prayer. I just want to encourage you on tonight to let you know that God will deliver you. That's what I want to talk about tonight. God will deliver you. And I need you to type that in all capital letters with an exclamation point. God will deliver me. Make it personal. God will deliver me. He will do it. Do y'all believe that? Let me tell you again, God will do it. Whatever it is that you're standing in need of, God will, he will do it. You ought to get excited. You ought to scream and holler. You ought to shout right now. God will do it. So when it is that we are facing challenges in life, you and I, all of us have challenges in life. Uh, and sometimes it might not seem that you have the solution at that moment. So when the people of Israel, going into the Bible in Exodus, when the people of Israel, when they faced uh, huge hardships, they, they, they were slaves. They, they, they were forced to do hard labor. They had no hope at a point in time for a better life. So what did they do? What did they do? The Bible says that they cried out unto God for help. Amen. They cried out to God for help. And I want to say to you right now, try God. I need you to type that in all capital letters, exclamation points. Try God. Try God. God bless you, Missionary Hill. Try God. God, I'm telling you right now, try God. And here's what happens. The Lord answered. He, he remembered his covenant people and, and the Bible lets us know that he sent Moses to help them, to free them. And so through Moses, the Lord brought signs and, and wonders. There, there were even plagues that came and then there were miracles. How many of you are standing in the need of a miracle? Hallelujah. Miracles still happen. I want you to type that for me in the comments, please. Miracles still happen. God bless you, Sister Eva Thomas. Miracles still happen. The Bible lets us know that Pharaoh hardened his heart for a long time. But, but after, after that plague came, he, he finally let the people go. He let the people go. But even after they were freed, their, their troubles weren't over yet. So they faced trial after trial and problem after problem. And throughout it all, the Lord tried over and over to teach them one simple lesson. What is that lesson? If you trust him, he will deliver you. My God, I need you to type that in the comments, please. I want you to get that in your spirit. If you trust him, he will deliver you. God bless you, Sister Joyce. God bless you, Sister Tan. If you trust him, God bless you, Tina. If you trust him, God will deliver you. So there are some deliverances that we can pull out of this story because the Lord has the power to deliver us from anything that challenges us. He has the power to deliver us from any problems that we may face. 
He has many different ways of delivering us, and sometimes they might not be what we expect. Sometimes your deliverance does not come in the way that you expected it to come. God bless you, Sister Luella. God bless you, Sister Anessa. So we can learn from the scriptures of some of those different kinds of deliverance that God has in store for you and I. So I want to tell you right now, can I just pause and tell you something unexpected is getting ready to happen. God is going to send deliverance in an unexpected way. And if you receive that, I want you to type that, please. God, give me an unexpected deliverance. I'm telling you right now, he's going to deliver you in an unexpected way. So I need to highlight some of the different ways that the Lord delivered Moses and the people and how he will deliver us. So the first thing I want to tell you is that God will soften our hearts. Would you type that, please? God will soften our hearts. God bless you, Sister Luella. So it may not have been easy. I want you to hear me, please. It may not have been easy for the people to actually believe that Moses had been sent by God. But for those who exercise faith, the Lord will soften their hearts to Moses' message. I'm telling you right now, you got to learn how to soften your heart. And so you may sometimes have a hard time believing and understanding or accepting some things that the servants of the Lord may have said. But if you're humble and sincere, the Lord will, he will deliver you from confusion. The Lord will, he, he will deliver you from bitterness. God will, he will deliver you from being frustrated by softening your heart. Get ready for that unexpected deliverance. The second thing I want to tell you is that God will soften the hearts of other people. Would you type that for me, please? God will soften the hearts of other people. God bless you, Sister Dietrich. So after Moses was born, Bible lets us know that the Pharaoh had declared that every little boy born at that time should be killed. But Moses was spared because his mother floated him down the river in a basket, and Pharaoh's daughter found him and was moved. So what did she do? She decided to raise him as her own. So her heart was softened. And sometimes those who could do you harm open up their hearts just enough, just enough for the Lord's voice to break through. Hallelujah. That would move them to have mercy. And so the Lord will deliver you from trouble by helping to soften somebody else's heart. Do you believe it? I want you to receive. The next thing I want to tell you that God is giving you the strength you need. Yes, I'm talking to you. I'm talking about in this moment, God is giving you the strength you need. I want you to type that in the comments, please. God is giving me, make it personal, giving me the strength that I need. Come on, if you believe it, I want you to type right now after that. God is giving you the strength you need right now. God bless you, Deacon Mappy. So when Moses first asked Pharaoh to let the people go, he responded by giving them even more burdens than they had before. And many of the people complained, but they did bear those burdens. I want you to hear what I just said. I said many of the people complained, but what we find out when you read it they did bear those burdens. They made it. They got through it. So the Lord wants us to cast our burdens upon him. Because if you trust in him, he will actually make your burdens seem lighter. And I want you to type that for me, please. If I trust God, he will actually make my burdens seem lighter. Hallelujah. That's why you're still alive. Congratulations. You're still here. 
That's why you're still making it. Because, yes, even though you're going through something, hallelujah, the hand of God is on your life. And he's making your burdens seem lighter. Oh, God. So he's going to deliver you. God will deliver you from physical issues, from your mental issues. I, I, I found out that this month is mental health awareness for men. But God will. God will deliver you from your mental issues. God will. He'll help you get through your emotional suffering by strengthening you to bear your burdens. And many of us right now, we're standing right now and saying, Lord, give me strength. Hallelujah. If that's you, I want you to type it in the comments. Lord, give me strength. Amen. He's strengthening you right now to bear your burdens. The next thing I want to tell you is that God is giving you a way of escape. I want you to type that, please. Type it as you're shouting. Type it as you're dancing because God is. He's giving you a way of escape. This is your season of results and God is going to give you a way to escape. So after the plagues, Bible lets us know that Pharaoh finally agreed to let the people go. And so while they were on their way, Bible also lets us know that Pharaoh changed his mind. He changed his mind and sent the, those chariots after them. And when they got to that Red Sea, the chariots were catching up to them and the Lord gave Moses instructions. Hallelujah. And when he lifted up that rod, Bible lets us know that the sea parted, the waters parted, and they were able to cross over on dry ground. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you right now, even for you, parenthetically, the sea is parting right now. And God is giving you a way to escape and get to dry ground. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's giving you a way. God's got a way out for you. I want you to type that for me, please, right now. God's got a way out for you. Let that reverberate in the atmosphere. Yes, God is giving you a way of escape. So even in our difficult situations, thank you so much for those hearts. I love to see those hearts flowing. Somebody shared this. Even in our difficult situations, the Lord will. He will give us a way to escape. I believe it. Do you believe it? Hallelujah. So this is especially true when it comes to temptation because he will help you if you pray to him. My God, my God. Let me say that again. He will help you if you pray to him. And I need everybody just to type the word pray in all capital letters, exclamation point. Pray. Yes. Prayer is always, always appropriate. It's praying time. Hallelujah. I said it's praying time. Yes, Lord. It is praying time. Pray. Pray and watch and watch God deliver you. The next thing I want to tell you is I'm getting ready to go is God is inspiring you to find a solution. Mm, I want to calm you right through there. Point number five. I want you to type that, please. God is inspiring you to find a solution. Yeah, the solution is on the way. The solution is on the way. Remember, I told you that. The solution is on the way. So why the Israelites, the people of God, while they wandered in the wilderness, they often looked to Moses, their leader, to, to solve their problem. But it seems that Moses sometimes that he wished that they could learn to receive inspiration from God on their own. And the Lord will deliver you from your problems by inspiring you with the solution. And I want to say that again. I need somebody to type that for me, please. The solution is on the way. I don't know who needs to hear that tonight, but I hear that in my spirit. The solution, I'm talking about what you need. Hallelujah. The turnaround that you need, 
what you need God to fix. The solution is on the way. And I want to tell you this, point number six, God will send help. I need you to type that for me, please, and put an exclamation point behind it. God will send help. Hallelujah. Help. Help is on the way. Lord, have mercy. And oftentimes the Lord will inspire somebody. He's sending help through, through a family member, through a, a teacher, through a, a preacher, through a, a leader, through a mentor, through a friend. God is sending help to help you with what it is that you are being challenged in. Hmm. And so the Lord will deliver you from your problems by inspiring somebody else to help you. And I'm telling you right now, help, help is on the way. And you, yes, you can be in the position to be a blessing to somebody else. And God is touching your heart right now to get you in position, to inspire you to be a help to somebody else. Help is on the way. The next thing I want to tell you is that God is meeting your needs with a miracle. I need you to type that in all capital letters. God is meeting my needs with a miracle. Get ready for your miracle. Because in the wilderness, we, we learned that the Israelites had many needs. They needed food. They, they needed water. Bible lets us know that the Lord provided for their needs in a miraculous way. So, for instance, he gave them manna to eat, which happened every morning. When they needed water, the Lord gave Moses instructions and the power to give them water miraculously, even out of a solid rock. Hmm, I'm telling you, a miracle is coming. So if you trust him, the Lord will work miracles and provide you with what you need. Hallelujah. How many of you know that God is a provider? Yes, he's going to deliver you. Yes, God, even now, he, thank you, Jesus. God is delivering us right now from uncertainty. God is delivering you right now from whatever it is that has you worried. God is delivering you right now from whatever it is that has you afraid. And through his miraculous power, God will do it. And I need y'all to type that in all capital letters. God will do it, exclamation point. Let me say it again. God will do it. And that's what I want to encourage you tonight. God will. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. God will he will do it. He will, he will, he will. He'll do it. Glory be to God. So the Lord has the power to deliver us from anything that we face, our problems, our, our troubles, anything that we have to deal with from day to day. So as we experience this kind of deliverance daily in our lives, our faith will begin to increase. Hallelujah. We'll have faith in God. Glory be to God. We'll have faith in God, miraculous working power. Hallelujah. So as we remember the Lord and his deliverance, he will remember us. And I'm going to tell you right now, God has not, I'm talking to you, God has not forgotten about you. So he offers us his covenant that binds us to him and and blesses us with greater help and strength through the spirit. So he truly is our deliverer. And I'm closing now, but I want to tell you this. Watch God do it. Hmm. I want you to type that in all capital letters, please. Watch God do it. God bless you, Mother Mary. Watch God do it. Glory be to God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We thank you right now. We thank you because you are God. You are good and you are God. You are great and you are God. You are the God of all grace. We thank you for your grace and your mercy because our hope is in you. And so we thank you, God, for restraining the worst 
and promoting the best in our lives right now. And so where even we are tested, God, we ask right now that you give us the strength and the grace that we may be able to carry the burdens and the load. And so when we are weak, God, we're asking right now for you to restore us. Oh, God, we pray these and all of the blessings in your precious son, Jesus, the Christ name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Watch God do it. He'll do it. Hey, man, he will do it. I'm a witness. I know you can testify. God will deliver me. He will deliver you. Hey, man, don't wait till that battle is over. I want you wherever you are. Just start shouting right now. I didn't say Dan. I want you to shout right now wherever you are. Thank the Lord because he is doing it in your life right now. We want to invite you to join us on this platform at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. Or you can join us in person. We're at 5474 Memorial Drive. We love to see your face in the place. We love to greet you, shake your hand, and thank you for being with us and coming together. Psalm 150, church, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I have a right and I have a reason to praise the Lord, and so do you. Amen. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. And once again, we thank you so much for tuning in with us on this evening or whenever it is that you're watching or listening to it. And just in case you hadn't heard it today, we love you and we need you to survive. So continue to pray for us as we pray for you. Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And we know that all things are working together for the good of those who love the Lord and to those who are the called according to his purpose. We thank you so much. And until the next appointed time, we're looking forward to seeing you then. But until that time, let the glory of the Lord be revealed in you. It is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.